Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good morning in Montreal Times and good evening in Jakarta Times. Now we are coming uh, with the aviation lecture presented by Permanent Delegation Office Indonesia to Indonesia Civil Aviation Organizations in cooperation with Center for Strategic and Aviation Studies. Uh, today, we are going to have uh, topics of discussions about international civil aviation organizations, the profile. So we have the visitors here, Mr. Petrus van der Westhausen, uh, Petrus van der Westhausen, or we can call just Mr. Petrus, uh, Mr. Vic. Is it Mr. Vic? Hello, Mr. Vic. Good morning, Mr. Fan. Bit center, so we can see your full face. Uh, yeah, okay, that's good. So, Mr. Vic, uh, today he is working with us as a senior advisor in permanent delegation office of Republic of Indonesia to the IQ. Uh, Mr. Vic has very long list of the record of provisional uh, employments. Uh, used to be like. At traffic control, professional at traffic controls, professional pilots, and a lot of project with the aviation thing with the IATA and all, of course with the IQ. And now we uh, is Mr. Vic. So Mr. Vic, we have today uh, 20 minutes time with 15 minutes of your time for presentations and five minutes for question and answer. And to make uh, everything short, I give your time for you to have your presentations. Time is yours, Mr. Vic. Morning, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We can ask uh, Daddy if we could start with the first slide, then we can start with the presentation. Okay, while okay, while Daddy uh, making some uh, preparations, you may uh, say something. Thank you very much. You will find that while I'm, I'm going through the presentation, uh, these slides are very busy, but I've done a lot of detail in it, and you can then afterwards, should you wish, use it as a record purposes of what ICAO does, how they do the work, and why they do the work. If there are any questions at the end, you're more than welcome, but I think that this is a fairly detailed description of ICAO, and uh, should you wish to store it somewhere. Thank you, uh, Daddy, I see the slides are on. We can go to the first slide, the second, the next slide, please. While we're waiting for the next slide to come up, you will find okay. that I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna discuss ICAO from the top down, show you a little bit of the departments that I have in ICAO, what work they are doing. I'm going to spend some time on the ICAO standards and recommended practices. And then it's also a little bit on the ICAO panels and work groups, which is normally responsible for doing the work. Next slide, please. Also, there we are. Now, starting with ICAO, the top uh, uh, organization or top section of ICAO is the council. They're composed of 36 members and the states are represented. So the council are actually members or representatives from states. We rep represent states at the same time ICAO and they're responsible for the uh, decision-making process. Next slide, please. Okay, we came to slide four. Now slide four is in the ANS, uh, the, 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 the Air Navigation Commission. We're waiting for it to come through because we are reliant on the slow internet, I guess. Uh, the Air Navigation Commission, they have 19 members. They are technically orientated. They're looking at everything that the work groups and the panels are doing. And then they make recommendations to the council for decision, which eventually become the uh, so-called or famous uh, uh, recommend, recommended practices and eventually also the standards. Now, then we go to slide number five. Now, slide number five is part of ICAO department, which is called the Air Navigation Bureau, and they're responsible for 
policy standardization, safety, infrastructure, and uh, also the implementation. Uh, the A and B also leads ICAO's effort during crises or contingencies. We're going to the next slide. If we're looking at legal affairs, I don't think we have to spend much time at legal affairs. It's exactly what it says. It's responsible for the legal area of ICAO. And also when there's a dispute between member states, the legal affairs section will then provide further information or advice. And the next slide, if we look at TCB, TCB is part of ICAO, but also operates separate from ICAO. And the main idea for the TCB is to do projects and they are paid by either the state or by organizations. So if you have a certain project that you would like to, to do, you can approach TCB. They will find the right person to do it with a technical background and you will reach agreement and the work will be done. Next slide. Then we look at ADB. That's really the admin section for IK. We don't have to spend much time here, of course, you know, because admin is admin and wherever we do it, it remains exactly the same. We're going to the next slide. The Air Transport Bureau. That is slide number eight. Slide number eight, so they're looking at strategic objectives for IK, especially when you look at security facilitation, economic development, environmental protection and the safety. They work directly under the KIKO Council. Then we go to the next slide. This just shows you a, a organized organigram of IKEA with the different departments and sections. You can study it in your own time. We don't have to spend much time yeah? there. This is a typical uh, organigram, in this case, the Air Transport Bureau. And you will see on one side they will have the chief environment branch, and the other side they will have the aviation security. So all the ones that I've just previously shown you in this specific organigram, you will find individual sections like this. Then we go to the next slide. And in the next slide, I care, as you know, why did I start from? Maybe we should have started with this at the beginning. They were established in 1944. There are 193 member states. All the states belong to IK for the moment. They, they are actually the global forum and for cooperation for member states. They develop the, the, the SARPs and policies, and they're also responsible. This SARPs and responsibility is responsible for the safety of about 100,000 daily flights. We go to the next one, SARPs. We all know what SARPs is, the standards and recommended practices, and the SARPs is, okay, there's about 12,000 SARPs to, to make it easy for yourself, uh, and uh, that, that is most probably in your local or national regulations already included. Then we go to the next slide. I'm gonna go through all the annexes, but I will not discuss it in detail. All the detail is included there. You can read it at your leisure. Annex one, personnel licensing, includes everything that has something to do with staff licensing. Next slide is Annex two, rules of the, the air. That is very, it's, it's, it's straightforward. Air travel must be safe. They look at the, the rules, they look at the safety, etc. Then Annex, the next slide is Annex three, with the med services includes everything that you would like to read about or anything that you need to find the information about is included in this annex. Annex 4 is aeronautical charts that describes all the requirements and what else is required from states to ensure that the aeronautical charts meet international standards. Annex 5 describes the units of measurement to be used in air and ground operations. Annex 6, address operation of aircraft engaged in international transport. <laughs> Annex 7 is the aircraft nationality and the registration marks, how big it is, where it should be, how it's issued, etc. Annex 8 goes in a lot of detail about the airworthiness requirements of aircraft. Annex 9 is a facilitation. Annex 10 is aeronautical telecommunications and they have volumes 1 to 5. Annex 11 is air traffic services, so whatever you would like to find out about ATC or air traffic services per se, you will find in this annex. Annex 12 
questionnaires, the slide to search and rescue, and address all the search and rescue requirements and also the MOU that ICAO has with IMO when it comes to operations at sea. The next one is Annex 13, Aircraft Accident and Incident Investigation. This section addresses this in detail. Annex 14, Annex 14, Aerodromes, Volumes 1 and 2, addresses all the requirements for aerodromes, mm. it addresses certification requirements, the marking, etc. The only thing it excludes at this moment in time is water aerodromes. Annex 15, AIS or Aeronautical Information Services or Aeronautical Information Management as it's known to us. Annex 16, um, Environmental Protection. I don't have to go too much into this. We're all familiar, familiar with the requirements of uh, the environmental uh, protection. Then we go to the next slide, which is Annex 17. This is the safeguarding of international civil aviation against acts of unlawful interference. Unlawful interference, we're all familiar. We know about flights being diverted to get passengers um, hand them over to the law authorities when they've done something wrong on board, etc. Annex 18, transport of dangerous goods. Anything you need to know, you'll find in here. Annex 19 addresses safety management and addresses everything in aviation as far as safety is concerned. I'm just going to run very quickly through the ICAO panels without going into detail. The Air Navigation Commission, the ANC, decides on the panels which one to establish and what their work requirement is. The first one is the Aerodrome Design and Operations Panel. Then you have an Accident Investigation Panel. Then you have an Air Worthiness Panel. And on the next slide, you'll find the Air Traffic Management Operations Panel. There's also one for Air Traffic Management Requirement and Performance Panel. A further one is Communication Panel. The slide thereafter. Data communication the infrastructure is a working group. It's not a panel. Operational data specific working group is one of the working groups that ICAO is established. And then, of course, they have a long standing one, which is the dangerous goods panel. One that's been there for many years is on the next slide is flight operations panel. You also have a flight recorder specific working group, which works under the auspices of the flight operation panel. You have a frequency spectrum management panel. Then on the next slide, we go on to the instrument flight procedures panel. Then we go on to information management panel. Then you also have a, a, a MET panel. Number 16 on the next slide is the navigation system panel, which addresses the new technology. And then number 17, the one that's uh, a buzzword these days everywhere is remotely piloted aircraft systems panel. 18 is the separation and airspace safety panel. It's been there for many years and will remain there for many, many years. Then we go to uh, 19 is safety management panel. You have a surveillance panel, the airborne surveillance working group is number 21. 22 is the air transport panel and 23 aviation security panel. Thank you ladies and gentlemen. That in short Take your time, read through all the description, what the work requirements are for the different panels and work groups in detail there, and you're welcome uh, to ask any questions. Thank you very much. How much time did I use? I think you're mute. Uh, please unmute, unmute, Pavan. They got you. Okay, uh, we have some uh, questions that address to you, Mr. Vic. Uh, the first is from Pak uh, Suka here from Surabaya. So we have the questions. Uh, the, the, the question is, since uh, Indonesia is the member of the IQ since 1953, so what's the advantage or beneficial of Indonesia to be the member? And what is this advantage to be the member? He said like that. This is the first question of you. Please, uh, I give you like two, three minutes to give some, some explanation. I think all international standards, thank you, first of all, for the question, but all international standards 
are developed by CARE. And to standardize aviation and navigation throughout the world is a big requirement. You do not want to fly from one country with different rules into the next country. And this is where ICAO makes resp is responsible of making sure that the standard from one country to another, whether it's in the airspace, whether it's in the aircraft, whether it's on the ground and in the airport, are the same. So from that point of view, there's a big benefit just from a safety point of view to be a member of ICAO. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vic. Second questions uh, from Jayapura, from Papua, uh, from Mr. Salim. Uh, the question is, uh, what is the impact if one single state member of the IQ do not follow the standard and recommended practices? But to answer your question, it creates a major problem for that specific state because if they follow their own rules that will have, first of all, impact on international flights. Number two, also create a problem for their flights flying internationally because there will be two different sets of regulations and standards. Number three, ICAO will address the same with the ATA. They, they will address this on a very high level with that state to ensure that that state becomes a member and follow the same requirements globally. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vic. Uh, the third question from Chicago. So I have to try to make some uh, translation to English. Uh, the question is uh, from Mr. Rudy from Chicago. Uh, the question is, um, what is the explanations of the IQ policy, no country left behind? I, ICAO started it off, especially with a 52 small islands group. And the reason for that was not many states had the same uh, investment from an airspace or an airline point of view with a flight operating into and out of their country. So they do not have financial resources as bigger countries as to support their development and requirements. Because of that, ICAO has decided that regardless of the financial resources, they will make sure that no country will be left behind and they will always support these countries and find a way to support them if there's no financial support. So, okay. Uh, one last question for, for this session, Mr. Vic. Uh, so this the question from Mr. Boy from Chicago again. The question is, uh, I'm trying to make some uh, translation to English. So, since in the latest situations, adding to the pandemic COVID of 19, what is the important role that I could play to save uh, humankind, to save people from this uh, disaster? So, this is the last uh, explanation, I, th I think, at the last question, I think, for the session. Please. Thank you. I think ICAO medical section, they have a specific area which address all international medical requirements. Now, first of all, they went out and working with international organizations like IATA and the airports to set a standard of people that operate in and out of airports at a specific time. They're also busy with the Council Aviation Recovery Team, which are planning or they're busy developing a plan for states, a standard plan for states to, to get the civil aviation in their country going again and meeting one standard. We all know it's going to be very difficult and we can't just push the button and everything is back to what it should be. So everybody, all the countries will have to have an aviation rec uh, recovery team working very closely on the one side with the medical section and then the other side with the normal aviation development and at the same time also with Yata and the airports which will have to work as a team to get aviation back on route. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vic. Uh, we are very appreciate for all of your presentations and your sharing information and your expertise uh, regarding to the IKO. I hope it's gonna be like giving us some beneficial
thank you again. Uh, thank you all of the participants who has already uh, joined for this uh, Avicen lecture. On behalf of Permanent Delegation Office Indonesia to IQ and Center for Strategic and Aviation Studies, very thanks for everything. May we see you again in the next uh, performance and next uh, webinar from us. Thank you again. Have a good day. Thank you.